This episode of The Patch is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron sends gourmet recipes and all the fresh ingredients you need to make them right to your door. To see what's on the menu this week, visit blueapron.com. Our listeners get their first two meals free. Just go to blueapron.com slash the patch. That's blueapron.com slash the patch. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome to the, to the patch. patch. We made a few changes this week. I want to get them out of the way. Oh, yes, yeah. so we should say who we are first. It's Gus. Ashley. Ryan. And Gus. So last week we had a disaster. A uh, spillage. Gavin Free. Yeah, a like tragedy. Greater yeah, than really. Exxon level He spill. Uh, showed up and destroyed our, our glass. So and I wore, I wore a Coke for the remainder of the podcast. We've switched to I'm a sure new nifty digital version fine. here on the screen in front of the set. Nice. You'll see it fill up as uh, the time go, goes. Yeah. And uh, once we're at time, it'll be full. And just for old time's sake, we brought back another hourglass. Here we Kevin, go. You, do the you cannot keep us down. The grand unveiling is not on screen. There it is. Bam! Flip you have to flip it. Yeah, well, this I mean, we're already off, it, so yeah, we're a little can, off. Can I just I have say as well, though, that that seems like a really high center of gravity. That is not Gavin proof. That's not in no way Gavin proof. Also, uh, that color is shocking. It matches our background. It goes well with the uh, with the nothing. IPad it goes well with nothing. Thing. Yeah, right. it's all. It's all. It's you don't know. I've got an eye for this. Also, it's huge. It's huge. It, it's it huge. Looked, <laughs> it looked a lot. I bought it online. It looked a lot smaller in. Uh, all right, look, I was talking with Ashley about this earlier. Seriously, the internet needs a universal scale, and don't say banana, because bananas vary in scale dramatically. He, he went off about that for a while this morning, by the way, yeah, talking about all the bananas, different sizes bananas. of bananas. It's like penises. Yeah, exactly. Some are more curved, some are less curved. Bananas vary greatly. Mm -hmm. We're talking about bananas still, right? Yes. Okay. So what the problem was also, <laughs> they listed the dimensions for this hourglass in centimeters. And I was like, oh, 25 centimeters. I'm sure that's fine. They metriced you. Doesn't yeah. that mean you 10 ready? inches? That's like 10 inches. Yeah. <laughs> is that, no, there's no way thinking. that's only 10 inches. No, that is over a foot, clearly. That's, a, that's easily maybe was, a, that's maybe a foot it was, plus. Maybe it was 35 centimeters. I Look, don't remember. iPad mini for scale. There you go. Is that going to be our new <laughs> scale? <laughs> so yeah, the, the hourglass is huge. Anyway, just wanted to get that bit of housekeeping out of the way. We're still on time. You can't stop us. Uh, so we got some gaming news to go over this week. Uh, not much again, still in the bit of a doldrum. The big news, of course, this week, Shadow of Mordor finally shipped, came out last week. Uh, came out we came yesterday. Out early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, came out yesterday. Yeah, I was, I was like, sorry. Oh my God, did I came lose time? <laughs> uh, in, a, in a rare move, the studio actually moved the release date up. It was supposed to come out in October, and um, now it finally came out. For and, the next-gen consoles. Correct. The, the old, the previous-gen consoles are still not. They're, wait, they're waiting until, they're waiting still, until still, I think, yeah. November. Uh, I thought it was October 18th. But um, let me, I'll look it up really quick, but it, um, I'm, it sucks either way. Yeah, so There's upgrade already. still fine not? grains of sand on um, this desk. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a game that you and I were lucky enough to be able to check out. We went up to WB Games. November 18th in North America. Uh, November, November 21st in Europe for Xbox 360 and PS3. We had a chance to check it out before the game launched, and we made a video that we, that we put on the note. Yeah. Uh, showing off some of, the, some of the things you can do in the game. And mm -hmm. now we can all play it. And how much I suck at it. <laughs> that was that was one of the, the major things as I was running around going, wait, what's the button again? And it's, it was, I was terrible. But Gus was surprisingly good. I'm a sneaky motherfucker. If you're, uh, yeah, if you're either really good at Splinter Cell or if you're really good at Batman, uh, the fighting system in Batman feels, or in, uh, in Mordor, Sound feels very Batman esque. Yeah. Well, it's also published by Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. so there's possible technology sharing going on there. True. Yeah, uh, Batman was Rocksteady Games, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, Monolith, but both under the WB umbrella. Right. And uh, yeah, the combat's very, like, you fight, mash fight, one button fight. to attack, there's then a, a counter button, button to counter. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can jump over your enemy and attack him from behind. Even a B, which is a stun button. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you, like, build up, like, a whole bunch of hits at once, you get a counter, and then right. you get to do a Wraith ability. I always squash guys' heads, but you can do other stuff, too. Yeah. So it's, I'm it's, sure. I don't know what those other things are, but you can do them. <laughs> it's fun, and I think all the reviews I've read so far have been pretty generally positive. And, yeah. uh So it, it makes me excited to see... It's weird to call it a new franchise, but a new game franchise based in a universe I like potentially starting. They haven't announced that they're doing a sequel, but I imagine based on the positive buzz they're getting that they'll do another game in this I'll, vein. I'll be interested to see how they do it. I mean, one of the things that I'm interested in as well is... So no one knows the... We don't know the ending of this game. I don't know what the final goal is based on the fact that before the game even starts like you start the game dead pretty much yeah and you've been killed by Sauron and his, his or his goons at the least and so I just go so is the goal to fight Sauron because I'm gonna tell you 
I know how that ends, because Sauron's still around for Lord of the Rings. Well, actually, Sauron, Sauron is not in this game unless you have the DLC. That was another thing. So they did announce the season yeah. pass. And the season pass will let you uh, play as Celebrimbor, the, the mm -hmm. Wraith, except back when he's alive, I guess? Right, yeah. Back when he fought Sauron the first time. Right. He's, the, I believe, the one that initially, I'm going to air quote, killed, uh, let's just say banished to an ethereal plane, uh, Sauron. Tortured to death. Yeah. Well, it just it got him out of here. He shooed right. him out of existence for a while. <laughs> he came back, but it was a, just, it was, it was just, a firm shoeing. It was a temporary shoeing. It made thousands you know, no of deal. years worth of shoeing, but it was a good solid shoe. It bought us plenty of time. Yeah. And to we, forget. Yeah. And lose the things that we needed. Um, so yeah, I, I, and I, I don't know the end of this game either yet. I've, I think I played it for probably two hours last night, so I, I'm obviously still fairly early in the game. The uh, the opening to the game is brutal. I thought it was really well done, the way it cuts between mm -hmm. time and uh, yeah, what's it happening. Was, it yeah, it did a really nice job there, I thought. So, I mean, for those who don't know, the, the premise is you start the game and you're dead. Spoiler. But you're undead uh, because you're, you're a... You're banished a, from death. A, a, was a ranger of Gondor, Gondor, Gondor yeah. guarding the Black Gate, even though lore-wise apparently it's a bit iffy because the Black Gate was supposedly abandoned, but maybe not. Anyway, uh, so you start the game, you're dead... Oh, and they killed your whole family, and you get to go back and like flash back and re rewind and live that. So as a training second, mission, as a training yeah. mission. So the second uh, Bernie was playing it last night, he starts and he goes, he's like, "Oh, he's got a son," and then it immediately was just like <laughs> super downer. And I, it's like here, bond with him a little, yeah. play with him. Teach him to teach, fight. Teach him how to sword fight. Now he's dead. <laughs> yeah, it I was. I hope you did a good job. <laughs> and like arguing with his wife over, why don't we just leave here? We will soon. How does it feel to be a failure? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's pretty sad. <laughs> it pulls no punches. I mean, you watch it. It's so hard. And it's that pretty said, brutal. I, like, I was all teary then going, I'm not. It's not. <laughs> I'm not crying over <laughs> characters that I don't even know. <laughs> that don't even exist. And it's a pretty brutal just fight mechanic game. I mean, it's you're lopping people's heads, or not people, but ur Urks. 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 Uh, you're lopping their heads off and, uh, you know, disemboweling, dis stabbing in various places. So mm -hmm. it's uh, very, uh, it, honestly, the look of it reminds me a lot of the first Dragon Age. You see it? Okay, I can kind of see that. Kind of that gritty sort of, uh, not real sharp, but. It's still fantasy, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Bright, shiny, let's say, oblivion fantasy. Right, yeah, it's, it's a little bit grimy. One of the complaints I do have about the game is, like, I, I, I purchased the digital download, and you had the option between the regular version and the pre-order version, when the pre-order version came with uh, a different character skin you could use. Uh, I think the they called Dark it the Ranger. Dark Ranger. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. I started my game. I was like, I'm going to select the Dark Ranger outfit. So you wear, like, all black, essentially. It changes the clothes that your character's wearing. You play the whole game like that, but anytime there's a cutscene, you're wearing the default. Oh, uh, that's annoying. Yeah, it's like, oh, what? It, it, it really takes you out of it, and then, and then as soon as the cutscene's over, you're back in your. But the cutscene's rendered in the game engine still, right? Yes. Like it's not a CGI thing. But it, yeah, I, it's I, I think it's it's probably pre-rendered yeah. in the uh, engine, and it's just playing as a movie. That's annoying. Yeah, and it's pre-rendered with the wrong out. Well, with the default outfit. Well, and now any subsequent outfits you might unlock will also go the same way, so you will never get to experience that as a consi consistent character. I class. want my Dark Ranger cutscenes. <laughs> you owe me. There's another feature that is really quite funny about this game, which is if you die, someone on your, like, but someone on your friends list is playing, it will, it might pop up a mission for them to go kill whatever orc killed you and avenge you, like, in their game. Yeah, your player deaths actually have some really interesting consequences in the world of the game. So not only does that happen where you will then, everybody on your friends list, I think, will then have the opportunity to hunt down the orc that killed you and kill them for a bounty. Uh, and then they get experience and you get experience. But there's a chance that if you got killed by a regular NPC, uh, the game really revolves around this idea of this, this captain structure. If an NPC character that's not a captain kills you, he then can take over a cap or challenge and kill a captain and become a captain. And or if there's an empty captain slot right. where you've already killed, then he or she, I guess, an aura can move up into that empty slot without having to fight anyone. Right. So the the killing and death have such interesting consequences in this game. Since it's, I mean it's entirely a single player experience, but there's still an interesting tie-in to your larger I, friends list. I was actually able to kind of use that to my advantage at one point last night. I got killed by, you know, just a run-of-the-mill off-the-shelf NPC who 
who became a low-level captain and who then challenged a much higher-level captain. And I got a notification that there was going to be a duel between them. So I went and showed up and killed the higher-level captain while he was dueling the lower-level one. I was like, oh, well, he'll be distracted. He'll be fighting that one. And I just sat off to the side and just started headshotting him with arrows. <laughs> then, like, jumped in and killed him. So then the lower-level captain moved up. And I was like, oh, fuck, now he got powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole, like, now i got to go kill this guy. So uh, it's a, And it's, he'd it's already a, killed you once. Yeah, and he, right. Now he, was, he has more confidence. <laughs> so it was a, it's, a, it's a fun mechanic. I like the random generation they have for <clears> each of those... Uh, works as they enter the nemesis system where this one's afraid of grugs, but this one it really has a grudge against what are those other things you ride? Caragors. Caragors. And so, like, don't attack him from a Caragor, he'll get be extra strong. Yeah. Uh, or th this one can't be damaged by arrows. One of the first times they introduce that system to you, you have to go fight, or you have to go hunt down a captain who's like so-and-so, the Caragor tamer, and he's like the Caragor handler. But his weakness is he's afraid of Caragors. And like, he, like <laughs> you get these weird moments where it's like he doesn't want anyone to know he's afraid of them, so he's the handler, but he's secretly really afraid hey, of them. It's a healthy respect. <laughs> Have you seen those things? They're mean. They're awesome. They... I love those. <laughs> Have you ever been attacked by one? Well, no. I mean, you just do mind control. And ah. then you're your buddies. Yeah. I, I tried to tame an entire pack. I just wanted to like just roll across uh -huh. the the meadows with like a whole pack of caragors. It didn't work out quite that way, but the vision was a lovely one. <laughs> yeah, you were the leader of the pack. I was. How big was your pack? I was like five. That's five. pretty. Hey, that's that's pretty good. I also accidentally kept killing them though. Um. Like I'd get into combat and they would uh, they'll automatically aggro on whatever you're mm -hmm. fighting as well, which is very nice of them I have to say. But it also means they kind of get in the way. Yeah. And so when I'm just swinging around wildly, sometimes the caracor's head comes off. I've uh, yeah, I think I've accidentally slashed quite a few of the little human slaves that are running around. Uh oh. I feel really bad about that. I haven't that. done that yet. I think there might be some sort of metagame with freeing the human slaves too. There is, yeah. Because there was, uh, that was one of the things that we asked about when we were actually at Monolith, and they were like, we, we can't talk about yeah, that. We're not going to be discussing that feature today, I believe is and, what and, they said. And, <laughs> and we were immediately like, oh really? So what you're saying is there is an aspect, <laughs> you just can't talk about it. Yeah. So that's cool. It's really fun. I'm, I'm I'm glad. I've been looking forward to this. It's been on the on the calendar as my destiny break. So I'm gonna put destiny aside for a little while. I'm gonna dive into Shadow Mordor. Then I'll I'll get back to it when I'm done here. But yeah. Now that we're in October, like this is <sighs> this is when it starts to get crazy. I mean, get, we're get ready. We'll I see. mean, we've got uh, so what is it? Um, Evil Within's coming out. Borderlands pre sequels coming out. Drive Club is coming out. Um, what else is coming out this month? Everything is coming out this month, it feels like. In fact, I mean, that's why Shadow of Mordor moved to get out of October Smart. where all the games were releasing. Great, great move on their part, I think. I think get, so, too. Get ahead of the pack. Uh, they, they got ahead of it by one day, and that's That's all it takes yeah. well, to get the money. One, one, one week, week yeah. but, you know, still one day. Yeah, well, if, you're the, only, if you're the only option on the shelf and someone wants to buy a game, you, congratulations, you did it, versus launching on the same day as two or three other games. Plus, Absolutely if you were not agree. into Destiny, you've been in a drought that's been pretty long. So I do want to talk about Destiny a little yeah. bit. There is some Destiny news to, to go over. The the patch. There's, there's quite a lot, actually. Yeah, the 1.0.2 patch. patch launched mm -hmm. today, which uh, is overhauls the Yesterday, way the crypto... Yesterday, if you're uh, listening to the audio version right, or right. Yeah. The, the not live version, it, but for you live folks... What's it overhauls the way that the, the Crypt Arc works, guaranteeing that legendary engrams will always yield legendary or better items. And rare have a greater chance of producing legendaries. Well. And now you also get legendary engrams and items from running the, the Vanguard Tiger Strike right. Playlist, which is the 24 plus uh, Strike Playlist, which are all and great the changes, I have think. A chance too. All great changes yeah. uh, for the better. And Ooh. Destiny and the Loot Cave is still gone. But they found, they found one. other yeah, ones. That's that's just a thing that's going to happen. They're not. I mean, they're, they'll just keep patching them, can, and they're not as easy. They're not as convenient. The loot cave that existed previously yeah. was like so stupid. I, I not. I mean, not, I'm not saying but, that they yeah. no, would say it was like it was so stupid easy to just sit there and just yeah. like. You yeah, know. but now people have made a game out of finding the next loot cave. Yeah, and that's just going to be that's going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing that the community do, community does now and takes pride in. Like, oh, I, I found know. another loot. Cave. I think they've done a fairly good job here of, of moving the focus now to actually doing things because that was the problem was you would go on these high level strikes and there you'd get nothing so there'd be no point i mean they created this whole playlist that was completely superfluous yeah like running running the strike playlist didn't necessarily guarantee you anything anything I mean, you that, could, of use just get nothing like the in spinner would leave you just wanting and at least doing the cave would give you 
um, weapons and armor to dismantle to get materials. And, of course, the occasional legendary Engram, which yeah. you would see more often than running a strike. I think here's the problem with the end game right now in Destiny. One, so they've only got the one raid. So, essentially... <laughs> Not for much longer, apparently. Well, yeah, we'll get to that that's still we'll December, that. though. I mean, how many raids did uh, World of Warcraft launch with? Raids? I don't... Or did it even have... I don't, know. I don't you, think it launched you, with mm -hmm. any. It would might have launched with one. Would you equate those, though? Like, well, would you equate the World of Warcraft raid with a with a Destiny raid? I wouldn't. They're called the same, and they, you know, they both serve as a high-level endgame, you know, mission and activity. But I'd say they're, they're very, very different animals. Well, I mean, really, they're essentially, in both games, they are the only endgame stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is nothing to do once you hit max level other than try and get new gear, and the only place you can go to get gear that's better than just regular legendary is to go on a raid. And the only reason I can tell so far to then beat the raid and go on the raid again on hard mode, uh, or to continue doing the raid on normal, is to get enough gear so that you can f do the raid on hard mode. And the only reason to do the raid on hard mode is to get the achievement. Right. There's nothing you're going to get from it, necessarily, that's worth doing it. Um, and they only launched with that one raid. They really it felt like there needed to be more. They, they made a game that feels like it's a loot game, kind of like Diablo, where you're supposed to be hunting for this loot all the time. But the in-game loot is just, all right, there's a, a short list of exotics. And then there's some legendary stuff that most of it is not useful to you anymore. Yeah. I'm still not so, very high level, but I'll tell you that the one thing that I'm most excited to get is like the dyes or whatever that make your outfit match. Uh, mm -hmm. You mean the armor shaders? shaders. Yes, a shader. There yeah, we you go. You get those all the time. Yeah, They're all over the place. Those are I haven't got one yet. The, uh, you, you'll start to see them once you get to yeah. a higher level. You, you just get them for playing a Crucible match. They'll yeah. throw them at you for anything. Just to answer yeah. your previous question, uh, World of Warcraft launched with two raids. Two Anixia raids. and Molten Core. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they very aggressively started rolling them out. Uh, the next one, I guess it started launching in July. So the mm -hmm. game came out in November. Yeah. Then the next July is when they really started. They added Blackwing Lair. Then September is Zulgarub. Well, here's a, how, what was the max level when World of Warcraft launched? Do you 60. remember? 60? Mm -hmm. And how long did it take to get to 60? You could do it in like, I mean, at the time, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if you really ground it out, you could probably do it in a day or two. No. 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 Yeah, at the time? <laughs> there are no's coming from off stage. Absolutely. No. <laughs> absolutely not. Nah. How would you grind that to 60 in a day? I mean, I, I don't know. Literally, about, tell me how. Where would the hours come exploits. from? exploits. I mean, you, you see people now who do... When an expansion comes out, they go from the, from the previous max level to the new max level in like a day. They just find the best place to grind XP and then do it. Ah, man, I don't think I ever hit 60 in that game. I refuse to believe that you could be do it in a day. But <laughs> let's say, assume that your average player would take at least, what, three weeks? Oh, maybe yeah, of yeah. concentrated effort? Like, yeah, an average player would take several weeks for sure. Yeah, okay, so your average Destiny player can hit 20 within three days. Of casual play. The first, the first person I think hit level twenty in, like in less than one day. Was oh yeah, it? no, no, it's remember, easily remember everyone less than was one announcing day. when the first guy hit. For it was max thirty. Level. Was the guy that was. It, it took him hit, two weeks. Yeah, it took to him two weeks 30. to get to thirty because thirty, the twenty to thirty is all entirely based on luck. Right. It's just finding the loot you need and then finding the shards to upgrade that loot. There's no like skill based uh, element to that, so. But that being said, let's so you just play through the single player, you hit 20 no problem, then maybe you get lucky for a couple weeks, or let's say a week, and you can start doing higher level stuff, and then there's only one raid to do. At least World of Warcraft, you probably have to grind for a long time, and there's still a bunch of stuff to do on that grind. You're getting new quests, new stuff, uh, and then at the end, you've got a couple raids to choose from. So Their in-game came too fast and didn't have enough to give you. So, someone... so do you think they should move up their uh, the release of the Dark Below? Yes, they need to get stuff out the door right now or people are going to completely go off Destiny. So Here's there the are people on Twitter saying that in, when Vanilla WoW launched, it took two weeks to hit 60. Two weeks? Yeah. Okay. So Even then, again, I, I stand by that. If you just played through the uh, story of Destiny, you'd be 20 already. And ready to start looking for your legendary. Yeah, absolutely. Player. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what I did. I think I didn't play any multiplayer when I just mm -hmm. did the story first. And I think when I finished the story, I was 18. Then I just did a couple of strikes and it was 20. Yeah. You know, I think the same day I finished the story. Yeah. I went from 18 to 20. Yeah, I'm, I mostly just play co-op like as the, the third in a strike team mm -hmm. for the boys. So the... Uh, 
there was apparently a bug in the game that allowed players <laughs> to see the up, some of the upcoming uh, expansion content. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know if that got fixed as a result today, but they were able to see some new raids and uh, story missions yeah, that was, are in there. It was like 11 or 12 all up, and it was... Um... Is basically everything for the next two expansions, the two that they've announced. So the the Dark Below, which is coming in December, and then um, the House of Wolves, which I don't think they'd even publicly named yet, but no, it's they they did they they did okay. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely in this is saying like, oh, you don't have this expansion, so you can't play it. I actually feel bad for the the people who met this bug because they couldn't play anything. Oh, did it completely lock? Them? It completely. It, they locked him out of the tower and it locked him out of out of uh, like all locations. Just every location says requirements not met. And so <laughs> they, 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 they couldn't play it. But what they could do is expose all of the uh, future DLC. Um, people are, have been really upset about it because um, some of the locations are on disc. Oh, so or so, some stuff of the, you or at the very least, some of the geography is on disc. Although, I'm like, sure not all a lot. Of it is. Yeah, although, you know, not a lot of that stuff works. <laughs> it's all on the same planets. They've they've made an entire game based on five maps. I mean, yeah. that's, <laughs> there have been places you could go now, like uh, on the the strike on Earth. There's a whole cave that you can go down in the area where you're waiting for those little lasers to diffuse. Like mm -hmm. you can go down a hive oh, yeah, cave I've right been down there. That's not used as far as I can tell for anything. It's well, like, it's, oh, well, there's going to be a future. Well, it's going to be. Yeah. It's but so the every dark now and then, then I go down there. I, yeah. I, when I'm doing that strike, I'm like, what the fuck is going on down there? I go, nope, still nothing. Nope, now you know, though. So yeah. the Dark Within is going to add what? I think it's one dark raid. Dark below. And dark below. And then one raid and then four strikes? Um, I think they're each like five or six, uh -huh. like five or six total things. And then there's also some Crucible content. Mm -hmm. People are kind of pissed that it doesn't add any new planets. I can totally agree with that. It'd be nice to see some new ones. I think the, um, the, the companion app has planets like Jupiter and all that stuff uh -huh. in there as well. So they're basically being like, we'll add them. Just not yet. Yeah. And, and you know, I can see, for people who are frustrated that the game doesn't have enough content, I can see them being like, really? You're just going to tease us with all this stuff that we don't have that someday you'll get to. Well, and the adding four strikes at this point, again, if you're talking about someone that's been playing up until December, there's no reason to go on a strike. I mean, you, it might be fun to do once, mm -hmm. but you don't need anything from it. They can't offer you anything. You, if you're really a dedicated player, you've already hit 30 by then easily. So, um... You know, after this bug came out and the uh, the video was released showing the new locations with the expansion pack, uh, the Bungie community manager, Deej, did confirm uh, that some of that stuff is correct. He said, they have the activity names, which may or may not change. They have a really good idea of what they're going to contain. They have placeholder nodes in the director, as you've already discovered, but neither of the expansion packs we've announced are finished. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's got its own store. Oh, then, then this is... Uh, Director of Production, John T. Barnes. It's got its own story. We call it an expansion because it has one of all activity types from Destiny. So it's story, strike, and beyond, and competitive and cooperative experiences in there. So it's they never... Only one strike? Hmm. They never... They, he, he says like it's, it's got one of all types. It doesn't okay. necessarily mean just one. Mm -hmm. But they've got at least one of all types. Right. So uh, it, they, they definitely worded it a little ambiguously. Yeah. yeah. The other thing um, is there was a thing that came out. It was a... a a possibly ex Bungie developer, possibly not, who knows. <laughs> um, it, it's kind of an impossible thing to verify. Uh, did an AMA on Reddit and basically went through and said that they scrapped the game. Like they scrapped most of the stuff a year ago and have just sort of shoehorned in as much as like possible. Like they had to rewrite a bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of the origin story and all that got like super like truncated down. Uh, and well, that's why, interesting... and that's why one, there's not a lot of story and to what's there sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, the most interesting thing to me that you touched on there is he claimed that all of the race, or I don't know if you call them races, all of the race-specific starting story missions were scrapped, and now every race plays the EXO starting mission. And that what you play now would have just been what you play. That as would an make XO so class. much more sense. <laughs> as to why, like, like it why makes, you're found in a car. Well, why you were just brought back to life. If you were a machine, they were like, okay, we can fix that. But if you were just some kind of biological thing decaying in an armor set for a hundred years, <laughs> that makes no sense, yeah. and no one asks. That still bugs well, me. There you go. That, that, does it? Does it bother you, Ryan? It does. does and it? you know what? This is the most frustrating thing about the whole thing. Like all of the negative stuff I've said today, that fucking raid was awesome. God damn what, it. Vault of Glass? Yes. <laughs> I am mad because I can't have more of that. For all of the faults of Destiny, it was really enjoyable to play, and I want to play more of it, but I they need to give me more. Yeah. And to December. be fair, for, for, yeah, all the, for all the complaining that we do, like that, that everyone is doing, they're mm -hmm. saying, 
the uh, Bernie put this very eloquently, I thought, was uh, this game that I'm playing every waking moment is doing this thing and it's unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, also another thing I found in Destiny related news is someone has created a website that tracks the reset timer on all public events yeah, on Destiny all planets. Public events. So you know when you're when to go to what planet in order to get a public event, which is really handy for someone like me who's trying to get ascendant materials constantly. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't on my Shadow of Mordor break, I would be hunting uh, public events with this website. Yeah, and uh, you can also, there's a fairly easy way to kind of farm that stuff, or at least a small amount of it, if you're not interested in like really aggressively hunting for them. If you have a couple uh, alternates, your daily uh, heroics off offer two ascendant materials for every time you complete them. So if you've just got three characters, one of each class, you can do it three times, and then all of your ascendant materials can be shared between characters. Oh. So you're guaranteed six a day if you just do the daily heroics and nothing else. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. And then if you do one public event, you'll get uh, guaranteed you will get some ascendant material in the mail from the postmaster. Correct. Yeah. And then sometimes you also get it as a reward for the event itself, I think. Like, you, mm -hmm. it might drop as a pickup. Yeah. Uh, and then the last bit of Destiny news I have listed here is the Destiny soundtracks available on iTunes now. I think it's 44 tracks and it's 9.99. See, one of the problems that I have with the the soundtrack stuff is that that live action trailer they did, uh, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was uh, to the soundtrack of. I always thinking of think of it by the way as the Viking kittens song. <laughs> I don't know what it's actually called. It's a it's immigrant song by Led Zeppelin. There we go. It's the immigrant song. It's the Viking kitten song. That's it's what it is and will always be. I remember uh, that it was uh, on the website. Rather good. Y oh. Really? Joel Vitnich, I think was the guy's name who made it. I l love it. But uh, the that was the soundtrack. Like, that song was the soundtrack to the live action mm -hmm. trailer they did. I liked it so much more than I liked the <laughs> Destiny stuff. Did the Destiny stuff's so serious, and that was just like, oh, we're about to just, like, go be badass and have a lot of fun. And I liked that a lot. Yeah, well, licensing Zeppelin's uh, kind of costly. <laughs> I can see why they They managed it for the trailer. Yeah, <laughs> probably a whole other ball, uh, ball game when you're talking about for the game. Um... You know, he did that guy going to go on a they, tangent They got their 500 million, the, okay? They can do it. The ra the guy, the rather good guy who did the Viking Kins, do you remember he did some Quiznos commercials? No. They were really weird. It's like the Furby, like, construction paper things. They were like, we like the subs. They're so good. You know what? I think I vaguely remember the something like Viking that. Viking Kitten guy made those Quiznos, so oh, those Quiznos commercials. Really, really weird. Well, on the bright side, we still have Viking Kitten. Yeah. All right, here. <laughs> uh, I want to read this thing. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of The Patch is brought to you by Blue Apron. Cooking and eating should be enjoyable, but if you're busy or health conscious or just don't know your way around the kitchen, it can be stressful. Ordering out is expensive and gets unhealthy fast. Cooking's a pain too. Finding and coming up with recipes, shopping for ingredients, dealing with leftover produce that goes to waste. Forget it. You need Blue Apron to take the stress out of cooking. Here's how it works. For $9.99 per meal, they'll send the right ingredients in the exact right proportions with simple recipe instructions right to your door. Meals are 500 to 700 calories per serving, way too low for how delicious they are. Blue Apron includes step-by-step -step instructions with pictures. It's idiot-proof. They work around your schedule and your dietary preferences. Cooking takes about half an hour and shipping is always free. You'll make meals like green tomato burger with green tomato chow chow and Old Bay potatoes and Mexican breakfast quesadilla and eggs and more delicious meals. You'll cook incredible meals, be blown away by the quality and freshness. Blue Apron, fast, fresh, and affordable. End the stress of cooking right now. Go to blueapron.com slash the patch. Get your first two meals free that's right, two meals free just for going to blueapron.com slash the patch. You see, it's right there on the screen. Get your first two meals for free. Go eat some food, dum-dum. Uh, I don't know why I called you dum-dum. I'm sorry. <laughs> just please go get some food. Uh <laughs> well, we've had uh, a couple of people actually ask about the, the website we were talking about. It's called Destiny destinypublicevents.com yeah. for the uh, the public event track. And, of course, we'll put it in the uh, in the patch notes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, yeah, absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> it's, it's so helpful. Um, one of the games that is coming out in October that we forgot to mention in our lineup is uh, Civilization Beyond Earth. Yes! Which uh, is another one of the games I'm really looking forward to coming out this fall. I'm a huge Civilization fan. In fact, we were filming some live action stuff uh, earlier today and Ryan and I were sitting next to each other. In between takes, I was playing Civ I was, I'm still playing Civ Rev on my iPhone. <laughs> uh, I, I love Civilization Revolution. It, when they released Civ Rev 2, but only for phones or for for you know ios i think and mm -hmm. android and not for console i was so sad it's a great experience on mobile no i believe they it and, and i think it's a you know that's fantastic but it still sucks that console misses out on one of the few 
strategy games that was actually good on console. Civ Rev was really good on the 360. I played the shit out of that game. Oh my god, so much. Mm -hmm. It's great. So I'm really excited for uh, for Beyond Earth to come out. Uh, I think a couple of weeks now. Yeah, it was a 10 minute uh, trailer that came 28th, out maybe? or a teaser. Yeah, the it's a 10 minute trailer, mm -hmm. and I think the moral of the story is don't fight aliens. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I do like that they've like the the planets or the planet whatever it is that you go to seems really unfriendly it's like oh here's <laughs> here's a gigantic razor worm burrowing through the earth and here is miasma miasma that's all yeah that's a word. definitely like poison fog and over here is like just everything is trying to kill you on this alien wow. planet on the bright side real estate's really cheap yeah why can't we ever land on the care bear planet you know, where everything's just right? like hugs and kisses and where we're, free the, where we're the conquerors and it's just like <laughs> you're wading through like Oceans of stuffing. <laughs> yeah, we've actually we've got a couple um, copies of of um, Beyond Earth that we're gonna do a little bit of playthrough stuff. So maybe we'll make some uh, what? videos. Do we? We do. We do. Who are they? We do. Well, you're sharing with me. I've got one. Bernie's got one. Do I have one? That's a, that's a no. Well, no. Oh, the silence is palpable. The disappointment. I'm sure. I'm sure if you sign the NDA, you can play. It, so. Okay, I can play. Uh, I'll tell, please tell me how it is. I promise I'll sign whatever NDA you give yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> in fact, maybe we'll we'll, um, we'll be able to play it a bit and talk about it on the patch next week. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll, have to, we'll talk. Maybe uh, maybe a live stream. Mm. Can we yeah. do that? Yeah, we could. I mean, I don't know how interesting it would be to do like a patch plays for something like that, but. Potentially. We didn't talk about this ahead of time, by the way. We're just totally yeah. honest. I don't know that we're yeah, going to do this. We're, by the way, <laughs> just no problem. Right we're now, we're now having a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, move over well, there. Welcome to the patch, the meeting. Build uh, your explorers quicker. <laughs> yeah, we, we play by committee. Yeah. It's like there's three of us and we have to vote. And the patch play civilization. Everybody's on Twitter just going. Oh, that's really funny. What's, uh, what scientific advancement should we get? If only we could do like some kind of real time analytics to see like which hashtag uh, is getting more votes. Yeah, <laughs> we should investigate this. I think we should. Um, well, uh, hang on. Well, speaking of games that are better on console or on uh, PC rather than on consoles, uh, have you guys seen The Vanishing of Ethan Carter? Nope. You watched anything about it at all? No, I have not. You should. It's gorgeous. It what is, is it? amazing. Well, it's, it's kind about of like Ethan Carter, it's and he about, vanishes. He does. <laughs> You've really summed up the first couple minutes of the game. <laughs> Uh, you're a, kind of a paranormal investigator, and you get a, a, a message from a little boy in a town, and you are going to check it out. So, a little boy contacted you over yeah. the internet, and you're going to meet him. Yes. Is Wait. Chris Hansen waiting for you? <laughs> I haven't found him yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's, it's, honestly, it looks like a trailer, if you watch the trailer, it looks like a better Sherlock Holmes game than the Sherlock Holmes game that's actually coming out. What you mean is, this is a different Sherlock Holmes game, I'm assuming, than the one where Watson couldn't move and so it just always appeared behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a terrifying video. It's great. <laughs> no, there's a new trailer out for a new Sherlock Holmes game where I guess Watson can move now. He's, oh, well. Yeah. So now, now we're getting really advanced. We're super technology now, Watson with legs. Uh, but no, it's gorgeous. I haven't played too far into it, but uh, it's got a really interesting kind of mechanic of you inspect things and you get almost kind of like the, uh, if you've ever seen the, the BBC Sherlock, the new one with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, I have. Yeah. You know how you, you know it. they do a lot of those things where like words will also kind of fly Bilbo. around. Also Bilbo. Also Bilbo. Uh, will fl kind of fly around and like you see kind of the train of thought via those little uh, subtitles that are kind of interactive in the environment. Uh, the game does a lot of stuff like that. Uh, and the guy also has this kind of ability to sort of see through things and help guide you to the next thing. Wait, Sherlock has like x-ray vision? No, I'm just talking about the guy in the game, not Sherlock. This is not a Sherlock game. There's no Sherlock right. involved. Sorry, yes, okay. Yeah. Sherlock's the other thing. I said this was looked like a better Sherlock game than the Sherlock game that's really coming out. Okay, so... Not Sherlock has X-ray sure vision. Has X-ray vision, yes. Cool. Creepy town, very pretty game. Go look at it. All right. I haven't played too far into it. I did encounter a funny thing where something is dying on my motherboard. Mm -hmm. And so I was playing, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like this loud, <laughs> like, screech noise started coming out of my speakers. And that was entirely just my computer dying, I think. Let's hope that's all it was. It could also be part of the game. I don't know. I hit mute immediately because it was like, ah, children sleeping. But, uh... My, um, so the, I have a quite an old Razer laptop, one of the older Razer blades, and, um, it can no longer, like, hold up to a lot of games, especially because I like to put all the settings really high. Uh -huh. And I, like, I've just, like, last week figured out the beauty of Steam's in-home streaming. Uh-huh. 
I uh, I was playing I was playing Gauntlet actually. So if that gives you any indication, like what my laptop can't <laughs> handle anymore, uh, and I like I so I installed it on our our big PC, but mm-hmm. I was in the other room and I just like streamed it. It was amazing. You could nice and responsive. You didn't have any like input lag or anything. Nope, it nice. was great. I was expecting input lag. That's like I was. I've been skeptical mm-hmm. about in-home streaming. I'm a little bit skeptical about, you know, PlayStation Now, all that kind of stuff. Because I'm just like, well, but what about the lag? Maybe for fighting games, it'll make a bigger mm-hmm. difference. But for this, it was totally fine. It was great. Just mm-hmm. go stream, like just click stream and then stream it from the PC. Sorry, I've been quiet for a minute here. I've been having to 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 to, do, to fact check something that we talked about a little oh, while ago, and I feel like it's important enough to to go back for a minute here. Which means we got the fact wrong. Apparently, well, the uh, we talked about <laughs> the supposed developer from Bungie who did the mini AMA on Reddit talking yeah. about Destiny development. I think Deej said he's not real. Deej has said that that person is not real. Uh, the Reddit mods in the AMA forum have said they've asked for that person to provide proof that they work at Bungie, and the person's mm-hmm. replied saying they will not be providing proof. Oh, okay um, then. So uh, it seems there is no proof that any of that what he said is actually true, and Bungie, rather than saying we do not comment, has flat out said that person is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to say that he, it, it, take it with a huge grain of salt. It doesn't seem like there's any legitimacy there. Mm-hmm. Yes. That said... That would make a lot of sense for the intro anyway. It makes a huge amount of let's sense. Just, yeah. Let's just pretend that that is mm-hmm. the whole thing for the intro. And then and then we'll go on with our lives and everyone will be happy. That and the best part is my character is actually an exo, so I got the right opening. <laughs> I, it, I got then one that are, makes sense. Then what are you complaining about? Ah, well, cuz I didn't they don't really care what kind of character you pick. That is one of the things that's sort of weird about the game. It's like, hey, whatever, doesn't matter. It's a, it's cosmetic. Yeah. yeah. There really is no like attribute mm-hmm. difference between the races. Right. You even go and meet your own people if you're the Awoken. And I yeah, I am an Awoken. Yeah, th- matter. and none of them are like, what's up, buddy? They're yeah. just, Queen's Dick Brother is just like, what do you want? <laughs> he, he's totally like some kind of goth kid. He mm. is so, like, he's emo and he's angry. And I don't know, maybe just like needs to go listen to some music for a some while. Robert Smith. Yeah, <laughs> something. He's awful. Uh, no, it's awesome. He's aw- awesome. I've... I really hope that at some point nope. in the future, like, you have an excuse to punch him or shoot him repeatedly. There's like, been some speculation know, that he is the crow, I think. Is that what the, there's some talk that he may be part of the focus of one of the new DLCs? Really? Because maybe he can die during filming. It's possible. Too oh, soon. Jesus. Too soon. <laughs> Man. I'm sorry, that was not <laughs> Actually, out, out of line. Well, uh, I, I really dislike the guy. What an amount of angst for a guy that appeared in a cutscene that was like, a minute and a half long. Yeah, but he was really irritating to that. He was really half. irritating, but he, hey, he's like all the story you get out of that game. You should really just embrace it because that's all you're getting. It's like that's one of the few people that'll talk to you. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm happy with people not talking to me. <laughs> um, and other non Destiny related news. Uh, another game that I love, Hearthstone. Uh, apparently, they're very close to releasing their first expansion. Which can add a hundred cards Wait, to the game. Which is not next Ramus. No, that was uh, a single player add-on. This is their first fully fledged expansion. They're saying uh, it's, they say they say that there's a difference between the Curse of Next Ramus and the expansion. The, I think the expansion is not going to have any additional story. It's just going to be new cards. A hundred new cards. So wait, the cards. expansion doesn't add the story, and the not expansion adds this new story. Correct. Okay. It's like a just, just checking. Just hey, want to make sure stories I'm on the same for everybody. Page. New cards, you have to pay. So they're going to be releasing a hundred new cards. They said they're going to roll it out in waves, and that they'll have details on it very soon. In quotes, with a little trademark. Are these like the cooler cards? Like if you run into someone with these cards, are you then just out of luck? Or I don't know. I, I definitely felt like. Immediately after the Curse of Naxxramas, that people, even people who played the free wing, were not utilizing the new cards they got in their decks. Because I was playing with those cards, and I was not seeing very many people playing them against me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as a result, like moving up in ranked play was kind of easy for a while. Okay. And then I started finding people who actually knew what they were doing and were putting good cards into their decks. <laughs> the and upper ranked people, the ones that really actually used it. Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, I, I think... Um, that the, the that, that there wasn't a lot of pe- people don't revisit their decks very often. I don't think. Like, like they get it set, they get comfortable with it, and that's it. Right. Not like me, who I lose a game and I want to throw my deck away <laughs> and start over from the ground up and cry. Gus is not complacent with his decks. He's actively seeking to improve them at all minutes of the day. Well, on the bright side, it always seems to be the game nearest him, so he has plenty of time to do that. Fair enough. 
Well, actually, shout, had, shout, we had to, shout out to last episode. Yeah, we had to talk about that. I asked him what platform he actually bought uh, Shadow of Mordor on uh, because he doesn't really care about achievements. So why wouldn't you play it on PS4? You can stream it to your Vita. And I said I had never thought about that. I really? was like, I totally should have done that. So what did you get it on? I got it on the Xbox One. Yeah. Yeah, but I should have got it because then when we were filming, instead of playing mm -hmm. Civ Rev on my phone, I could have been playing Shadow of Mordor on my Vita. Yeah, I was sitting there just thinking, man, I wish Xbox had that because I could be right now playing Shadow of Mordor. Riding a Caragor across the fields. <laughs> yeah, well, and um, the PS4, PS Vita also has a lot of cross-play stuff. So even if you're not streaming it, you can continue progress. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Okay. I don't yeah, know. Not, I, not, not, for, I mean, not for Shadow of Mordor, obviously, but there's other games where it's out on the Vita and it's out on PS4 or oh, PS3, uh, yeah, think, and then you can like play one, it'll save your progress, and you can play it later I on I think the other Borderlands one. 2 does that, uh, doesn't it? Like that, you can, yeah. I think you, uh, there's sounds, some games where you can like export right. a character and then uh, pull it in. Okay, I see yeah. what you're talking about. Um, so when did I miss the news? When did I miss the press release that Tetris is being made into a movie? Yeah. Dude, <laughs> and it's supposed to be a sci-fi epic. It's the How it, is that going to be a uh, thing? Oh, come on. Look, remember when Battleship became a movie? It's the I do, and it was awful. Not even the cute yeah. guys in it could save it. Yeah, no pretty bad. Wasn't one so, of them from True Blood and he still like he still know. couldn't be cute enough to save that movie. So the mm. film production company is Threshold Entertainment, who previously uh, did Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Okay, I'm not gonna like give him any credit for Annihilation, but for making Mortal Kombat, like, okay. <laughs> I loved that movie. Good movie? No. Did it stop me from loving it? No. It, Who's been sitting on a script for Tetris? For all, I mean, Tetris is one of the oldest games known to man. So, let Tetris me, is let, probably let me people used to something. play it with rocks. Let and me sticks. read you the most puzzling sentence right. of this story. Uh, it's the first sentence. Feature film production company Threshold Entertainment announced today that it has partnered with the Tetris Company to produce a movie adaptation of the seminal puzzle Tetris. There's a Tetris, the Tetris company? The Tetris Company. Is that like the Pokemon Company? Is that like the Electric Company? I don't know. I was like, wait, wait, talk about that. <laughs> What's the fucking Tetris Company? So, uh, yes, the keepers of the ancient Tetris archive. Do they have to do like a weird handshake where they like lock their hands together in a weird way? And, and then, then their hands disappear. They disappear. It's like, ah, oh, you're part of the Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> the Brotherhood of the Squiggly Block. With no hands. Everyone so, thinks the S Block needs to be the villain. <laughs> He's just misunderstood. He's like the Queen's brother. He's just a little angsty. He's not misunderstood. He's just a jerk. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's coming out sometime. I can't wait to not see it. And the uh, filming is oh, started. Oh, you'll see it. You'll see it. You cannot help but see it. Uh, filming started on the Dead Rising movie. Right. Um, In other news, there's a Dead Rising movie. I missed that one too. That At least that's a zombie in, like, movie. June, I think. That makes sense. That's something you can put into film form. So it does I'm, sound I'm, a little bit generic, I'm, but I'm pulling... it'll be all down to execution, I think. So, so Dead Rising, I missed the story apparently when it came out in June, which is what you said. Um, so the headline in June was Dead Rising is being made into a movie. <laughs> Dead Rising is being made into a movie for Sony's Crackle Video Service. Yep. So the Xbox, you, what you're saying you find weird here is that the Xbox exclusive franchise is going to be exclusive <laughs> yes. to Sony's platforms for the movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a Crackle Video Player for, for the Xbox. Xbox, but. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like it's not a platform that has a lot of traction. Maybe this is their attempt to get people to download the Crackle video player. Uh, I, I did it once by accident. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't think I've ever really used it, but uh, that's out there. <laughs> how do you, well, one, why, how do you accidentally download it? Was, and two, there, why is that an accident? I had like, an, you just got a new thing. There was an ad on my Xbox that 360 <laughs> that said, you know, watch Seinfeld, download uh -huh. episode of Seinfeld for free. And I was like, oh, cool, yeah, I want to watch Seinfeld for free. And I clicked on it, and it, it was via the Crackle player. And I downloaded it. Was it. It's a like, trap. Oh, I don't want it. I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want to watch it that it's like, bad. never mind. I don't want one more app. Yeah. Too many all. apps to manage already. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to deal with it. So that's how I accidentally downloaded it. Uh, so the, the thing that they said now is the Dead Rise movie will be like Indiana Jones with zombies, according to the director. I that. like the description already. But there's but a lot of... But that doesn't make any of... sense. I mean, saying it's like Indiana Jones, there's a lot of Indiana Jones to pick from here. Are we talking about, like, Indiana Jones getting blown up in a refrigerator? Are we talking about, like, <laughs> Indiana Jones drinking the magic Kool-Aid and then ripping out somebody's heart? Which Indiana Jones are we going with here? Oh, I just assumed it was a fedora and a whip. <laughs> that would do it for me. So, uh, that's, th that's, that's all the similarity there is. <laughs> and I thought that he, they had a, a really bizarre quote here. So um, the writer is... So Dead Rising, written by... 
the Mortal Kombat legacy producer Tim Carter. They start shooting in Vancouver this week. Uh, Tim Carter said, the idea that you can be bitten and remain human as long as you take your medicine every day, he's talking about Zombrex, mm -hmm. uh, is very interesting and dramatic, similar to the social stigma of living with HIV. All right. I was like, what? <laughs> All right. I mean, I I can kind of see. First of all, has yeah. When's the uh, another very cool element from the game? <laughs> yeah, it's super cool how people can be it's infected cool. with horrible it's things. It's cool, like AIDS. Yeah, yeah. I was like, why is anyone saying anything about that? That's a really fucked up comment to make. It's pretty insensitive. Yeah. You know, you know like the zombies with AIDS. <laughs> Which then there's already a show on BBC that kind of addresses that whole well, not addresses that thing, but has that concept sort of at, at its core. I don't know the name of it, but I see the ads for it all the time when I'm watching Top Gear. Has living with That's HIV? All I have to no, it's it's about uh, like a post zombie outbreak where they've developed a drug that can unzombie. Well, it just makes you like not crazy zombie. Like you're still dead, but you're now in control of you're yourself team again. Zombie. Yeah, you're your normal human functioning brain level. But well, there's a um, but dead. There's I think. an upcoming one called was it I Zombie? That's based on the the comic, and I'm not sure if it's actually started out yet. But the the main character is a she's a zombie. But she is also a coroner, and so she <laughs> she like eats people's brains and then ends up with their memories and then goes try to solve the problems that they had that's, or the things that they were guilty about. That's similar to the comic Chew, where there's a guy who, when he eats something, he can gain all the memories of that item. So like, let's say he eats a chicken, like a chicken breast. Mm -hmm. He feels everything the chicken felt and knows all of the experiences oh. it had. Uh, so he is with the FBI and he investigates murders. They have to take him to dead bodies and he has to eat little like, pieces of them gross. to figure out how they were killed so and, uh, gross. and find the murderer. I think that was in, um, oh, what was that? It was like a zombie romantic comedy. Oh, Warm Bodies? Yeah, yeah there we go. I think, uh, I think that was kind of an element too. Like I think he's eating the boyfriend's brain or something and keeps like flashing back. It's That's right, bizarre. yeah. That did happen. Um, but talking about video games... Hey, what do Some we, more. Yeah, yeah. Well, zombies. Those are the cornerstone of video games. These zombies days. You know, I mean, and look, Nazis. It, it they was... make up like the bottom of the video game pyramid. <laughs> the, the trip made it very logical. And the top is aliens. Zombies, Nazis, aliens. Speaking of which, Aliens Isolation coming soon. That's another one coming out this month. Right. I started seeing TV commercials for it. I'm really excited about it. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. I will probably not play it because I'm a sissy. When I, was I will. A, I'll watch from afar, going like this, while yeah. somebody else plays it. When I was a little kid, Alien was like the movie that really scared me. <laughs> I love it. It just, I, I'm just not good with scares. Mm. I wonder if they'll finally hit, you know, a success on the Alien franchise. They've been trying to make games from that. As long as they don't lose a lawsuit, <laughs> a class action lawsuit, it'll be considered a success. Oh man. Yeah, they. I think they settled the Colonial Marines lawsuit out of court. Did they? I, 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 I think so. Wow. So yeah, it cost them some money. To, uh, to do a crappy job on that. Um, so, apparently there's an Assassin's Creed iOS game that uh, hit the App Store. Now, do you mean iOS or do you mean uh, Microsoft Windows? Because we need to be clear. <laughs> well, this is not CBS <laughs> News. We will not. Last night, CBS News had a tweet where they mistakenly said Microsoft unveiled iOS 10. But no, I definitely mean iOS. There's a, and we see it right here. This is the Assassin's Creed iOS game. And I believe that you, it's a free-to-play game, but you can only play for so long... And then you need additional in-game credits to unlock more playtime, or you have to wait. You have to like quit the game and wait for See, a while. Now, my understanding is different. It's that, like so you play, you get experience, and then you level up. And then when you go to train a skill, it starts a timer, and so you you know you can't level up or do more skills until that timer is finished. But you can pay money for uh, credits that will speed that timer up. So I haven't played the game obviously because it's not released here. No, it's it's, a, it's Australia, only Australia, available in Australia, New Zealand, and it's not going to be out anywhere else until next year. It's a they're calling it a soft launch. So it's Assassin's like Creed pretending Identity. Pretending it's not really out. Um, I'm going to read the blurb from Joystick here. As with most modern Ubisoft mobile games, Assassin's Creed Identity relies on microtransactions. A time limit counts down during gameplay, and once it hits zero, the only way to earn more time is to either turn off the game and wait, or spend real-world money to purchase purchase Abstergo credits. So that sounds to me like it's only a limited amount of time you can play, and then you have to pay or wait. So what you really want is a device that's battery lasts exactly the same amount of time as your playtime. Or it's got a credit card reader on it, and you can just swipe <laughs> your credit card. To, like It's like the modern insert a quarter. It's just like you just keep swiping. Continue? Question mark? Yes. Which yes. Is, you know, it's funny that you draw that analogy, because that 
it's exactly how video games used to be. If you went to an arcade, you put, put quarters quarter in, in, and that was how you Keep got feeding to play. Quarters. Mm-hmm. Now that's like a really horrible, you know, really horrible idea if you're offering an iOS game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I went when I was at Dice this year. Uh, one of the sessions I went to, they described arcade coin-op machines as the first uh, microtransactions. Yeah, because it's essentially you're paying little bits of money at a time to continue playing the game. And they talked about in designing those early arcade cabinets how you know they would measure that as a metric it's like how many minutes per quarter and uh, try to maximize the amount of quarters that an arcade owner could though could recoup let's not forget most arcades out of business True. so uh, as a business model may not have been the best idea <laughs> well quarters just aren't worth much anymore wow now they all went to cards before they went to yeah after yeah. quarters uh, was the swipe cards like david buster's i mean it's essentially the rise of consoles and the home true home uh home gaming that's um, that's pretty much killed it. Quick note on the mm-hmm. TV show that you couldn't think the name of. It's In the Flesh, in the according flesh. to Twitter. Thank you, Twitter. Thanks, Twitter. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> Hashtag the patch. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was going through the news this morning, and I saw the fucking cutest 3DS ad ever. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's an ad that's released in Japan for the new 3DS models. And uh, it's like an actress running around with like Link and Mario, and they're all playing dress up and... I wish, uh, they would, I wish they would stop making me want the new 3DS because I can't have it. Why not? <laughs> Link in the Because in a I'm not going to import it. You're an adult. You're allowed to buy what you want. But I can't. Yeah, because I can't, Japan. I can't import it. Well, but even if I <laughs> import one from Japan, I, it's region locked to Japan and I can't use my library. I'd have to start over completely. So answer True. me this. Does this mean that you can change the skins on the 3DS? Like, yes. I, I really see but here I show think, her But I think that... There's a chance that might just be for the new 3DS, not the new 3DS XL. Okay. But There's, again, uh, I won't know until it's out here. But right. the, but they they are doing face plates, which is cool, especially for um, you know because you can change them out and you don't have to buy limited editions all the time. But I think um, one of the things that I heard uh, I'm, I haven't confirmed it is that uh, the XL will still be like that because they figure if you're going to have an Excel, you're probably an adult and you have the Expendable money income. to just keep buying the new one. So ones. the thing <laughs> I wonder is, faceplates are a cool idea. They did not work on the 360 and they abandoned that. Like, I'm curious to see if, if this is going to play out, if people are actually going to buy into it. I can see well, there's some super cute ones and they go with the new themes that they are that they're, they have coming out. Hmm. So um, they're releasing new themes in Japan. They've got some like 30 themes that go anywhere from like 100 yen to 200 or 250 yen. So one to two or three bucks. Yeah, like super cheap, but they're, um, they're themes for for the, the 3DS interface. That's hmm. also a very different kind of thing. If you're talking about a faceplate for a thing that sits in your house... Versus something you carry around that becomes more of a fashion accessory, kind of like a phone case. That's true, but like I I was, I'm I'm not I'm obviously not the target market for this. But when I'm holding a console, I don't see the case. So like, what does it matter to me? How often you sit there holding a console? No, I'm I'm sorry. Would like the 3ds. (laughs) Okay, I'm holding that and I'm playing it. I don't see the case on the back. You don't, but everybody else does. Yeah, but it's not for you. Also, though, like I I got the uh, I had a red one and I specifically got the Animal Crossing one because I thought it was freaking adorable. And every time I see it, I do this. My wife, my wife did the same thing. She had a red one, and we had to get the Animal Crossing so one. So you may not be the target demographic, but you know the target yes. demographic. Yes, <laughs> okay, I got it. Uh, it also came with the game preloaded, which helped. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm also being reminded that uh, I need to talk about Had a Full Boyfriend before the end of this. Can yes. we not? I've seen God. people I tried asking that you about it nonstop. <laughs> God, so, that's not a game. Did you not like it? It's not a game. It's for the birds. It's, 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 it's an interact. It's an God. interactive, you know, visual novel. The only thing worse than it's, the game was that joke. <laughs> it's so amazing, but um, I I, I left it on game. overnight because I had it on. Um, that's the only on way to play computer. that game, really. And then I I had to alt tab out because I was doing news or something like that, and I forgot about it, left it on. So now Steam says that I've played like 25 hours of Had a Full Boyfriend, and all <laughs> like all of the recommendations for that new recommendation engine, they're all visual like interactive mm-hmm. visual novels so that's very exciting but this game is ridiculous first of all good or bad in a very in a good way but also it's just ridiculous bad. Okay. It's, it's bad no it's, it's very bad i don't think ryan would be the biggest fan but i love it you go to this school and you're like oh it's my first day of the new quarter and i go to a school for birds and then it's like which of these birds do i hit on <laughs> and the so the whole thing it's all you know cartoons but the birds they're like they're not animated they're pictures 
that have been like cut out with yeah. like a black line around it, like a stroke. Well, wait, did, which option did you go for? Because you have the option at the beginning of show me the bird or show me a anime representation of the bird. Um, I went for the anime representation, but it only shows okay. it the first time. Okay. After that, it just goes to the the bird. It's like this is this is kind of what the bird might be if it was a human. <laughs> so you know, it's like here's the here's the stuck up French something something pigeon. I don't even know. I can I imagine that this game could be very educational. You could probably learn a lot about different species of birds, but I cannot keep them straight. That bird is moving. <laughs> <laughs> the green screened a pigeon for this. <laughs> Look at it. Is that in the game? No. This the this whole thing is just just crazy. You can there's the there's the the that mean bird doctor to go on a bird. Diet. It, that's the mean doctor bird the uh, bird that was up on screen there. You can you can hit on the doctor bird for your school. You can hit on your teacher. You can hit on the new student class president who's a real aristocrat, not a fake aristocrat, or your best friend who works to support his mother who has bad digestion, or a, I think like an old, uh, an older business and entrepreneur lead gentleman, or just it's crazy. And there's puns everywhere. They also the one of the first things was good morning, everybody. This game sounds awesome. I don't know what you're talking about, Ryan. Look. It's, it's one of those things that I think you have, like, it's a great experience, even if you just go, like, this is not a game, or this isn't my kind of game. You just one of those things that you just go, somebody made this. People put hundreds of hours into this It got this delayed, game. didn't it? I mean, they need more by, time. It was only by, it's like, been, two weeks. It's been out in, it's been out in Japan for a while. It. You haven't seen it. All right, look. I realize he, he did. He just thought he just it was saw on the screen. I, I realize that I am not the target demographic for a game about finding a bird boyfriend. <laughs> I accept. Can that. you find a bird girlfriend, or is it just bird boyfriend? I haven't tried. Okay. I'm sure if I hit up the park, maybe okay. I don't know. So far, I've only found pocket a bird full boyfriend. of birdseed will take you a long way. Okay. Anyway, I think at a certain point, like I, I started reading through it, and it took me a while to actually realize, and it, it's dumb. I should have realized. I had to feel boyfriend that like, oh, I'm a girl. Oh, right. It's in the title. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm looking for a boyfriend. Okay. Uh, so you thought you were a boyfriend. I didn't know what I was. Like I was, just, they, you enter into it and they never really talk about you, your character mm -hmm. for a while. And I could only read so much before I started to go a little brain dead mm -hmm. and just started hitting skip. Your bird brain? Got, uh, God damn it. <laughs> got all the way to the end of the game by skipping, I think, um, 10, 15 times. Uh -huh. So that's the entire thing. You have 15 decision points. And then the game is over. Really? Yeah, but I mean, well, you have to decide. Well, not, I mean, 15 seems low. You've got to decide, like, it's real who low. you're going to invite out to this thing. And when you have a free period, are you going to go to the gym? Or are you going to go to the music class? Are you going to go to the math class? Are you going to, do you want to raise your charisma? Or do you want to raise did, your did wisdom? Did you find your had a full boyfriend? I don't know. I couldn't even read the last screen. But uh, so I let's, bet he let's ended imagine, up dating the doctor. Let's imagine now you're playing Walking Dead. And you only made four decisions and the game was over. What about 15? You just said 15. I know. I'm making an example. Okay, it's, four. You know, if you're talking about game length, we're All talking, right. you know, cut it down a lot. All you right. would be mad, right? Yeah, yeah. That didn't tell you a story. 15's about right, though. 15's about the amount of decisions you have right. in, in an episode of The Walking Dead. No, to be fair, I made it through, like, I want to say four or five. Of and The Walking I, Dead? I, no, of uh, How to Feel Boyfriend. And then I couldn't <laughs> read the text on screen anymore because it was physically painful. <laughs> It was great. I seriously, my one of my eyes prolapsed, and I had to put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Um, That's not seriously, but that's right. how it felt. It sounds interesting to me. I really, I really want to check it out. Yeah. No, you don't. It's fun, but now everyone's like, "Oh, you need to recommend this on the because we're a Steam curator now." Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, "Recommend this," and I'm like, "I don't have 25 hours." Don't, don't do it. So don't. we'll put it. Save in the yourself the blood clot. We okay? have a, a Steam curator page, so you can check out games that we're playing. You on will Steam stroke out. Don't that, do it. Uh, we'll recommend. <laughs> so you go check it out. We'll put it in the patch notes, and you can uh, see games that we're talking about. Um, there was another clip I saw earlier today of Korean shoutcasters commenting on a League of Legends match, and it was just so. Energetic. Is it anything like the uh, was it the Brazilians, um, uh, the Brazilian commentators for the uh, World Cup soccer matches? Maybe or, uh, more energetic. Uh, we have a little clip here that uh, I wanted to show just okay. as, as a little Let's tease. See it. Uh, Let's see it. Yeah. Triple kill, quadra kill. That's me. I'm not kidding. Hit that guy. We have no speakers. You can hear it. You can hear it. How 
was so not luckily, a that was what it said that was on just the screen. Inaccurate. Luckily, it's uh, it it's actually also had subtitled, the accent on the screen, so you can <laughs> understand what they're talking about. And uh, I think it just makes the game a lot more fun. You're a lot more invested in it when it's not just like a super monotone commentary track. Yeah, it makes it easy to get excited about. Yeah, keeps but, me in a job. Yelling at video games. <laughs> and uh, we're really short on time. One of the last bits of news I wanted to mention was that the Xbox One did launch in China after all. Uh, it launched with a total of 10 games, one of which was uh, uh, ID at Xbox game specifically for the China market called Naughty Kitties. Naughty Me Kitties. Uh, I had to look. Uh, here they are. Uh, all the games available. So I had Forza, to, I had Connect to look to up. Sports Rivals, Power Star Golf, Zoo Tycoon, Max the Curse of Brotherhood, Dance Central Spotlight, Neverwinter Online, Rayman Legends, Trials Fusion, and Naughty Kitties. Does is Naughty Kitties out here because if so and it is, it is, is it, not. and is it a visual novel? You can, if so, I think Ryan I don't, would really I don't like know it. if we have a clip available, but <sighs> I did uh, I did pull a, a video of it. Uh, here it is. Here's a little bit of gameplay from Naughty Kitties. Aww. Not what you were expecting, I bet. No. no. These kitties are fucking shit up on a plane. So wait, no, I get it though. This is a That's this is Angry kitty. Birds, but this is Naughty Kitties. Yeah. <laughs> That's gotta be where the name came from. All right, so we're at time. Our timer's running out here. Our oh, timer so down what you're here saying is, is that the, the timer beep, is beep. reasonably accurate. Yeah, yeah we accurate. started this a little late. So uh, we gotta go. We'll be back next Monday with an episode of RT Podcast, Tuesday with an episode of Screenplay, and next Wednesday with another episode of The Patch. Bye. <laughs>